So this is SQL Developer 3 and I just wanted to show you how we can connect to non-Oracle databases like SQL Server and Sybase, MySQL, Teradata and DB2. Um, yeah. So if, if you initially download SQL Developer and try and create a connection, you'll see that you only have Oracle and Microsoft Access are the only two tabs here which allow you to connect to those databases. It doesn't seem like you connect to SQL Server or Sybase or MySQL. But that's because we don't ship those non-Oracle database JDBC drivers. Uh, you have to download them yourself. And SQL Developer is pretty picky about what JDBC drivers you use. For example, for SQL Server and Sybase, we use an open source JDBC driver called JTDS. And we only use a very specific version of it, JTDS 1.2. We don't support any other version apart from that. So if you go up online, uh, Google for JTDS, uh, go on its website, you'll be able to download for free the JDBC driver to connect to SQL Server and Sybase and the version you want is version 1.2. So to tell SQL Developer about it, you go into Tools, Preferences, underneath Database and then Third Party JDBC Drivers, you can add an entry. And I have the drivers all put in this directory here for myself. So this is the JTDS 1.2.jar. So when you download it, initially it's inside a zip. You just open up the zip and what you're looking for is that particular jar file. So extract that jar file and then tell SQL Developer where it is. So if you select it, click OK. When you right click and go New Connections, you'll see now that we have Microsoft SQL Server and Sybase. Uh, we're able to create connections to those databases. I'll just create connections to all the other databases as well so we can see them. So only need the preferences again add an entry. You need to download these particular versions from um, the proper website. So for MySQL connection 5.04.jar um, for DB2 sorry it's not the directory you want, it's, it's the jar files you want. These are the jar files you want from the DB2 uh, JDBC driver and for their Teradata has two files this here. There are the jar files you want for that as well. So now when we go and create connections, we have able to create a connection for DB2 or MySQL, SQL Server, Sybase, and Teradata. So I'll create one for Sybase, uh, but all the rest of them are basically the same. Uh, now Sybase ships with a sample database called Pubs2. I'm using the SA system administrator login here because that will give me full privileges to look up all the metadata and query all the tables and all the databases. You don't have to give, um, you don't have to log in using SA, but if you want to like be able to access all the information, then SA is the user you want to log in with. So I'll save the password, in this case, defaults to nothing. Uh, you need to retrieve a database, so this will be the default database you connect to when you connect in under SA. So I'll choose pubs2. Oh, and it is, I don't have it on my local host. No. So after you retrieve your whole list of databases, you're able to choose which do you want to use as your default one. I'll use pubs2 here as my default one. So we're connecting the Sybase server and pubs2 is going to be the default database. You can test it, that was successful, and then you can connect. So after you connect to a Sybase database, you, you have a connection now that you can use in your worksheet. And you can write run queries and so on uh, from there. But it's interesting to note that you can browse down through all the databases. Because I logged in as SA, System Administrator, I can view all the databases in my Sybase server. But of course the default one is Pubs2. So if I go select star from, have a look under here, to my tables, I have a table here called Authors. You can see what the column definitions are. You can browse the data. Uh, if there's any indexes or keys or constraints, uh, you can browse them all here. Uh, so I can select from authors as well um, in my worksheet. Uh, the thing to note is I didn't have to prepend this for pubs2 because my, my default database is pubs2 already. If I change my default database, you can change it just by right clicking on one of these other databases. If I change it to Barry, for example, I can right click it, go select default database, and apply. 
I'll just close the rest here. If I try that again, it will fail because I've changed my default database to Barry. Uh, another thing to note is we're not really trying to become a Sybase or MySQL or SQL developer development tool. Uh, we're just providing a little bit more functionality so that people who work in Oracle but also work in these other non-Oracle databases can browse them, run a couple of queries, you know, do a little insert statements and maybe encourage them to do a migration towards Oracle as well. So uh, we, it's not fully featured. We do browse all the objects and we show you the details of them but if you right click on an object, for example a table in Sybase, you don't get all the options that you would if you were browsing an Oracle database, you don't get all the wizards and so on and so forth. Uh, another kind of limitation is that our worksheet is is has been designed to recognize basically SQL plus syntax, Oracle SQL plus syntax. So it doesn't fully recognize all Sybase syntax that you may have in a Sybase script or in a SQL Server script. So there may be some commands which you will try to run against your Sybase database, but uh, the worksheet doesn't really know what to do with them, so it doesn't run them at all. For example, SP help pretty common uh, function in Sybase if you try and run it it'll tell you unknown command. Uh, there's a little workaround here, a little trick that you can actually prepend the command what we call is a, is a SQL developer hint you go SQL developer colon you have to tell it what type of statement it is. Is it going to return a query or is it an actual statement like insert, update or delete uh, and then you need to also tell it where the command finishes and you have to use a semicolon so if I run this now, the worksheet kind of doesn't have to parse or recognize the command as such. It just looks at the hint and goes, OK, this is a query. I'm going to return it in a data grid. And so you can see um, you can run certain commands that way as well using this type of hint syntax. And this hint will work for uh, alter party databases like MySQL, SQL Server, and Teradata. So yeah, the browsing all these connections, all these non-database connections, we're going to be able to browse all the standard objects that you have, your tables, if any store procedures you'll be able to see them as well but as I said it's pretty limited functionality, it's not as uh, fu um, fully featured as the Oracle browsing and the Oracle uh, connections. If you right click on a connection you'll get to, you can also view these connections using the schema browser. So this is a schema browser here where we can, if you'd rather um, use this navigator than the tree type navigator, that's not a problem. Again, you can browse the tables, look at its data, and so on. You get the chance to migrate to Oracle. So, this is our the migration features within Side SQL Developer, which will allow you to migrate your Sybase database or your entire server over to Oracle. Um, Analyze Database will generate an Excel report for you so that this is part of the migration again you can just do an analysis on the database and it will tell you how many objects are there to migrate and kind of give you an idea of how big the project is to migrate from Sybase to Oracle and again you can select the default. So that's the basics of setting up a non-Oracle database connection and what you can and can't do.